My fellow Americans, Memorial Day is a day of ceremonies and speeches. Throughout America today, we honor the dead of our wars. We recall their valor and their sacrifices. We remember they gave their lives so that others might live. Hi, I'm Melissa. Thank you for joining us today. It's supposed to be our live from, uh, which we do on the first Wednesday of every um, of every month, but we had a lot of technical difficulties. We're really sorry. Sorry if you kind of sat to watch us live, but we are recording this. We will post it later today. So we do want to thank you for joining us this way at least. So although we are in the beginning of May, we are going to spend today's, well, what it should have been a live from, talking about the upcoming Memorial Day holiday. Um, as you know, Memorial Day is an American holiday celebrated on the last Monday of May each year. And the holiday uh, commemorates the members of our U.S. Armed Forces who have lost their lives while serving our country. Decoration Day, as it was originally known, um, went, uh, became a federal holiday in 1971. Now, the date for Decoration Day was chosen because it had no actual ties to any one specific anniversary of any battle. Um, what began as just sort of informal ceremonies around our nation has become one of our country's most hallowed and solemn holidays. On the first ever Decoration Day, General James Garfield delivered, a, delivered an address at Arlington National Cemetery to 5,000 participants who had just decorated the 20,000 graves of the Union and Confederate soldiers that are buried there. Memorial Day, as it gradually became known, um, was set originally to honor those who lost their lives in the Civil War. But after World War I, the holiday was expanded to commemorate any man or woman of the U.S. Armed Forces who lose their lives while serving our country. Let's now hear from President Reagan. When he spoke at a ceremony at Gettysburg in 1863, President Lincoln reminded us that through their deeds, the dead had spoken more eloquently for themselves than any of the living ever could and that we're living could only honor them by rededicating ourselves to the cause for which they so willingly gave a last full measure of devotion. Speaking at the tomb of the unknown soldier on Memorial Day in 1984, President Reagan specifically talked about the unknown soldier from the Vietnam War when he remarked, About him we may well wonder as others have, as a child, did he play on some street in a great American city? Or did he work beside his father on a farm out in America's heartland? Did he marry? Did he have children? Did he look expectantly to return to a bride? We'll never know the answers to these questions about his life. We do know, though, why he died. He saw the horrors of war, but bravely faced them. Certain his own cause and his country's cause was a noble one, that he was fighting for human dignity, for free men everywhere. Today, we pause to embrace him and all who served us so well in a war whose end offered no parades, no flags, and so little thanks. We can be worthy of the values and ideals for which our sons sacrificed, worthy of their courage in the face of a fear that few of us will ever experience by honoring their commitment and devotion to duty and country. President Reagan was eternally grateful to the men and women of our U.S. Armed Forces who defend our country's freedom. That they are willing to risk their lives for our country's freedom never ceased to amaze or humble President Reagan. Speaking to military troops, President Reagan once said, you're here because you're vital to, to our freedom, the crowning glory of our civilization. Americans wouldn't be American without freedom, and we wouldn't have freedom without you to defend it. On Memorial Day in 1982, President Reagan remarked, I have no illusions about what little I can add now to the silent testimony of those who gave their lives willingly for their country. Words are even more feeble on this Memorial Day, for the sight before us is that of a strong and good nation that stands in silence and remembers those who were loved and who in return loved their countrymen enough to die for them. Yet we must try to honor them, not for their sakes alone, but for our own. And if words cannot repay the debt we owe these men, surely with our actions, we must strive to keep faith with them 
and with a vision that led them to battle and a final sacrifice. Our first obligation to them and ourselves is plain enough. The United States and the freedom for which it stands, the freedom for which they died, must endure and prosper. Their lives remind us Their lives remind us that freedom is not bought cheaply. It has a cost. It imposes a burden. And just as they whom we commemorate were willing to sacrifice, so too must we, in a less final, less heroic way, be willing to give of ourselves. Here at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation and Institute and at the Reagan Library, we honor the men and women of our armed forces every day. We have two memorials here on our campus to do just that. Right now, you should be looking at our Blue Star Memorial. The Blue Star Memorial actually honors all men and women who are currently serving in our armed forces. The Blue Star Memorial program began in 1944, and the Reagan Library added one to our campus about two or three years ago. Now you're looking at our Gold Star Families Memorial. The Gold Star Families Memorial honors the family members who have sacrificed their loved ones for our country's freedom. This specific Gold Star Memorial program began in 2010 when Medal of Honor recipient Herschel Woody Williams started a foundation to have these memorials created and put around our nation. We were so honored to add this one here to our campus in 2018. Let's hear more from President Reagan. Winston Churchill said of those he knew in World War II they seem to be the only young men who could laugh and fight at the same time. A great general in that war called them our secret weapon, just the best darn kids in the world. Each died for a cause he considered more important than his own life. Well, they didn't volunteer to die. They volunteered to defend values for which men have always been willing to die if need be the values which make up what we call civilization, and how they must have wished, in all the ugliness that war brings, that no other generation of young men to follow would have to undergo that same experience. As we honor their memory today, let us pledge that their lives, their sacrifices, their valor shall be justified and remembered for as long as God gives life to this nation. And let us also pledge to do our utmost to carry out what must have been their wish, that no other generation of young men will ever have to share their experiences and repeat their sacrifice. This year on Memorial Day, the Reagan Library will be hosting an event. The event will be held outdoors. It is free to attend. We encourage you to come. It will have keynote speakers, military honor guard, live military music, and even a flyover. To learn more about the program and to find out how to register, please visit reaganlibrary.com slash events. Again, this is a free event um, to, commemorate, um, to commemorate Memorial Day. You can learn more at reaganlibrary.com slash events. Now, as you know, uh, if you watch these live froms, we always spend the last few minutes talking about some product in our store that relates to the topic at hand. As always, simply go to reaganlibrary.com slash store, scroll down just a little bit to the featured product section. And everything I'm talking about will be right there. So again, reaganlibrary.com slash store, scroll down to the featured product section and you'll find these products. So the first one I wanna highlight is this really great, um, um, United States veteran cap. It does say Reagan Library on the side. And this cap honors all veterans of all armed forces of the U.S. military. It's made of 100% cotton. It does have a Velcro um, strap on the back to help adjust the size. It's a great gift for the veteran in your life. Also in our store, um, we sell this um, really great eagle statue um, with the American flag beneath it. And on the base, it says peace through strength. And it also has President Reagan's signature on it. Um, so this is just a really great way for the patriotic person in your life um, to kind of show that patriotic spirit. The last gift I want to highlight is actually one of my favorites that we sell in the store. It is an, a, a three by five American flag that is within a cherry wood boxed case. Um, when you purchase this, it does come with a letter of authenticity um, to the American flag. 
Um, and you can buy it just like this. But what makes this gift so special is that you can actually call our museum store and share a special date with our store, whether it's an anniversary, a birthday, a graduation, whatever that date may be. And the museum store will actually fly the flag over the Reagan Library on our flagpoles before refolding the flag and putting it within the case. So you can actually gift someone or gift it to yourself or gift it to someone um, a treasured memory of um, a beautiful American flag in a case that flew over the Reagan Library on a specific date of your choosing. Uh, for just a little bit extra money, you can actually request that a video be made, then the video will actually showcase our staff flying the flag for you over the Reagan Library. So again, all three of these gifts, um, great for not even just a veteran, really anyone in your life, reaganlibrary.com slash store. So before we sign off, I do just want to say as we do approach this Memorial Day holiday in just a couple of weeks, um, we ask as we approach the holiday that you just take a moment to reflect and remember all of those who have lost their lives while serving our country and defending our freedom. To also take a moment to thank all of the family members who sacrificed their family's loved ones um, who did uh, die while serving our country as well as taking a moment to thank any member currently serving in our military or previously served in our military and thank them for defending our, defending our country, defending our freedom, um, and just serving in that way. It's, it's so appreciated. So thank you so much. We appreciate you joining us. Um, sorry that we weren't live. Um, and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for joining us. We owe them first a promise that just as they did not forget their missing comrades, neither ever will we. And there are other promises. We must always remember that peace is a fragile thing that needs constant vigilance. We owe them a promise to look at the world with a steady gaze and perhaps a resigned toughness, knowing that we have adversaries in the world and challenges, and the only way to meet them and maintain the peace is by staying strong.